What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the Spurs My League in NBA 2K20. And as you can see, we're taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves this episode. You know, last episode we lost to the Lakers. Uh, tough game. Lost by like 15, I want to say. Yeah, 100, 115. Um, as you know, we've only made one kind of minimal roster move. So we're, we're actually going to make a second minimal roster move in this series. We got Dante Cunningham, who we picked up just to have a, uh, I guess, 13th guy on the on the active roster with guys in the G League. So we're going to cut him, and we're going to go to free agency, and we're going to make the real-life signing of uh, Tyler Zeller. And honestly, guys, it kind of makes sense for me. And another thing I need to do is uh, put Bellinelli over these two while we have Lonnie Walker hurt. As y'all know, we got DeJounte Murray and Lonnie Walker out for a couple weeks. Um, so Tyler Zeller's a Spurs, you can see. He's honestly just, I'm planning on him being like the long-term third string center. He's, he's 29 years old, so he'll be turning 30. Hey guys, I know what you're thinking. Um, you know, when am I going to make like a real roster move? Like in the, in the Miami Heat series, I, I made a ton of moves early on in the season. And in this series, I've literally basically not made a move. Um, and I want to say, you know, I'm, I am a Spurs fan. So I have covered the Spurs on, on, on SpursTalk.com. So I, I might handle this series a little more realistically, at least in the first season, than um, than I would another team that you know I'm I'm a little less familiar with. D'Angelo Russell's taking Derek White to the rim every every time, and I need to be careful here because they're getting off to a hot start, and this is a game I absolutely need to win. But yeah, so talking a little more about, oh my gosh, if, if I can say one thing without getting scored on, but talking a little more about the Cody, not Cody Zeller, Tyler Zeller signing. Uh, it does make sense because Chimizu Me Too ratings wise kind of develops into a, a backup caliber center, except the way he plays in this game just isn't good. I mean, he, he has the generic movesets and, and everything. He's really slow. Compared to in real life, he's pretty athletic. So he's just not a good guy to use on 2K. So I, I don't plan on me too being a part of the long-term plans. You know, hopefully he can get us something decent in the trade market in the offseason or something. Finally got the first two points a couple minutes in. But yeah, and, and same with Drew Eubanks. I, he's a little more usable in 2K, in my opinion. But again, he's got a pretty generic move set, and it doesn't even have his real face. So, I, not a guy I really plan on using much. Uh, Cody Zeller's got his real face. He's got a real move set, and he's going to start declining because he's about to turn 30. But at the same time, he's he's not in like in his early 30s yet, so he'll decline slowly. So he makes a lot of sense to me as a third. There's a third center, and we got a little mismatch here. Go up with that quick, get the and one. Oh, man, nice move by Aldridge. Love, love to see him being playing strong like that. So, yeah, but uh, ideally, Tyler Zeller might be our long-term third-string center. Um, you know, things could change. I don't think they really plan on that happening in real life. I think they really signed Zeller in real life. Just as an insurance guy, now that you know we're not going to have Aldridge going in the playoffs, um, he's not a bad player, so I'm sure he might get a little bit of playing time. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't play at all. So, really, nothing would surprise me. Knowing Pop, I mean, you know, we signed Tracy McGrady that one year right before the playoffs. I, I think it's the year before we won the championship. It's the year we lost in the finals to Miami. And, um, and he barely played at all. As a matter of fact, I don't think he scored a, a, a bucket as a, as a spur. But, um, 
at the same time, if Pop isn't coaching in Orlando, which I'm not sure if he is or not, from last I heard, I don't think he will because of his age. But then it would – oh, man, they're, they're letting DeRozan get that deep in the post. Oh, man, you got to make that. But uh, what was – I would love to see Becky Hammond coach the playoffs and have full control over the team. Just, uh, you know, see how she does. See if she's... And we, we kind of know she's got legitimate coaching skills, but, you know, how good exactly is she? We, we've, ne we've seen her coach the G League and do a great job. Not the G League, the Summer League team. But we've never seen her, you know, coach the main team. So that, that would be pretty cool. Also, I wouldn't be mad if Tim Duncan is... This is the guy coaching because I, I I would love to see him as the next head coach. There you go, Rudy. Guys, I'd love it if y'all leave me a comment, kind of tell me your opinions on on how I'm the format I'm using with where I play one game every five games. Um. You know, it might be, it's probably what, like 16 episodes or something before there's going to be a playoffs. I think it'll work out, though, with it with 2K21 coming out in, in October. I'm assuming early October. Oh, I'll get that. Dang it. And then, uh, like, this will be my 2K series until 2K21 comes out. So I'd at least like to get through one season and an off season. Oh my gosh, I'm getting abused by D'Angelo Russell. As you can see though, my, my offense kind of flows better, in my opinion, with um without DeJounte Murray. That doesn't mean I'm planning on getting rid of him or anything. It's just the, the floor is spacing better. And we happen to have Bellinelli in there over Lonnie Walker, who's the better shooter. You know, now the only guy that's kind of hurting the spacing is, is DeRozan. We can afford to have and he even made a three. So I guess, I guess he's really not earned the space in that much. But we can afford to have Pirtle not shooting when, when everyone around him can. This is going to you, Bellinelli. <laughs> that, that's not a good shot at all. And he makes it, of course. That is Marco Bellinelli in a nutshell for you. Oh, Patty's getting wide open. Yeah, Patty's feeling it tonight. I mean, look how much better the offense just in general flows with. That's not what I wanted out of that, but that is nice rebound and put back Pirtle. So we don't get this play in animation. Well, let's see if Patty can get open here. Yep, wide open. Knocks down a moving three. Let's go. That's all day. Uh, the, if they're not going to guard LaMarcus Aldridge properly with a center, which do they even have a center in the game right now? No. James Johnson's their center. So he, he's definitely going to eat every time. I'm not even going to bother running a play. James Johnson's giving me some fits. That's okay. We'll, we'll run a play instead of just force feeding Aldridge. There we go. Got him a little space. A good finish. Derek White's getting a lot of points in the basket this game. And I know you're saying, you're looking at this game and thinking, Ryan, you're up by 18 and complaining about 2K. But I'm not saying it's not easy. I'm just saying it's frustrating the way it plays. It's just kind of stupid. So guys, leave me a comment. What is the best way to handle the rotation in this game? Right with with Bryn Forbes is obviously the biggest issue in the starting lineup. I mean, you could argue Lyles is kind of an issue too, but Forbes is public enemy number one, and 
our franchise and the organization right now on 2K. So what are we going to do about him? Um, I'll tell you my plan, which is pretty much just to ride with him the rest of the season. Uh, he lives, he leaves in free agency anyway. Um, he never wants to re-sign with the Spurs, which is weird because even though I start him, he still like isn't happy with the organization. You know, and unless you win the championship and everybody's morale goes up, then that happens. But yes, that, that's plan A. Uh, I mean, plan B is to trade him. I, I don't think I'm gonna get anything for him, or or I could put him on the bench, or just take him out of the ro rotation completely. But I, you know, I don't know if that really behooves me any because we got Keldon Johnson in the G League, and like I said at the past episodes, Kel Keldon Johnson is basically being groomed to be the backup small forward. But, you know, I, I kind of don't hate how the team's basically tanking in the simulation right now. You know, l would love to get, like, a top 10 draft pick. The bad thing is, if we trade DeRozan, we don't have a number one option. So the guy replacing him would have to be the number one option. So, like, if I traded DeRozan, for example, for, like, Chris Middleton, even though, you know, it'd be a great trade in real life, Chris Middleton's an off-ball player, and he can't really, he doesn't really create his own shots much. So, I, I don't know who the number one option would be, especially if Aldridge is gone. Uh, Forbes finally made a three just standing still. Wow. But look, that, that's horrible defense. But he somehow blocks the shot. So, like, all, all is forgiven. And, and, and then goes up with some, like, soft left hook over, like, D'Angelo Russell, but still finishes. So, I, mean, I can't complain. Um, he's not soft on rebounds, though. He, he, he jumps up and gets the boards. Oh, so you're going to send him. Nice. He's going to get that up. Oh, man. <laughs> oh gosh, I got dunked on. Nice pass. Let's go. I, I love using Marco Bellinelli in this game. Um, <laughs> even with his rating down to like a 71, he's still fun to use. It's just, he's got a great release. Well, so much for the idea of Pirtle playing in the NBA. He just got retired by Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, so guys are stepping it up. Patty Mills, DeRozan especially. Uh, Aldridge, not so much. I'm, I'm kind of struggling with him. I usually do this year. Okay, some scrubs coming in. At the end of the third, we got Quinn Derry Weatherspoon. Quinn Weatherspoon out of Mississippi State. Pass that. <laughs> That's an ugly, ugly signature shot, but he, he knocks it down. At least it's not generic, I guess. I'll say this, our scrub bench unit, I mean, they're, they're legit scrubs. I mean, Derek White can play, but the rest of this team right now is just scrub city. I was gonna. I was about to say big three out of habit by Minnesota, but there's clearly nothing they do at this point means anything. Yeah, that's that, that's a bad signature shot because it's like a slingshot when he shoots. I'm not saying Cody's or Tyler's. Zell, I keep calling him his brother Cody's name, but um, it's not like Tyler's Eller shots any better, but. I just hate that release on um, 
Shemiz and me too. And honestly, I, I think in real life, Drew Eubanks is the, the slightly more consistent and better player than Chimizzi Me Too. Um, Me Too might have more upside, but I, I've i always compared Drew Eubanks to like Aaron Baines, but like a better leap. And you know, not as strong, obviously, but, but still, he, he's got that frame. He's a strong guy, he can jump. Um, his timing, sometimes, you know, some days it's good, some days it's not very good. I actually did an article on, on where I covered, I watched a few G, G League games for uh, for SpursTalk.com. So I, 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 I always leave a link in the description on my Spurs videos. So go, go check that out. Um, I kind of talk a little more about Weatherspoon, Eubanks, Me Too, all those guys, Kelvin Johnson. Man, Mar Marco Bellinelli has just been feeling it tonight. He's had a really nice game. So, guys, game's about over. Do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. It it does me a big favor. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't take much from, from y'all's end. But just one little thing you could do to support the channel. that It's, a, it's actually not little at all. It's, it's a big thing to me. So, I really appreciate that, guys. Um, shout out to all all you know what 84 of my subscribers we're just gonna let the clock run out there so that was a really good win and really much needed win as you could see d'angelo russell definitely got his but we, we slowed down carl towns and everybody else really didn't do much of anything um derozan did his thing he didn't play a ton because he didn't need to he he was awesome tonight Derek White stepped up, Bellinelli stepped up, Patty Mills stepped up. You know, even Bryn Forbes did his thing. He he was three from for three from three. So that's should I say that say that three times real fast. Uh, Pertle is always doing his thing. Aldridge really struggled, but you know, all in all, good game, guys. We're gonna go and simulate four games so we know who we're playing next. Hopefully, we get somebody back from injury. So I believe we're going to play the 76ers in the next episode. But we are starting to win a couple. Um, and then we lose two in a row. And we got DeJounte Murray back. So let's go to the screen, put him back in the starting lineup, which means that Derek White, my dude, you are you're out of the starting lineup again. And we'll go and simulate. Five and ten, so oh look, I don't think we're in the playoffs as of right now. I, I would, I would doubt. Yeah, so we're three games back. Okay, so we we, we got to look at this, making some moves with me too next episode. And uh, with that said, I am out. Peace. Peace.